Hey, this is Gerald. I'm here with Doug and his, uh, well, really not new, but new to Florida, um, sport copter. Uh, Doug, tell us a little bit about your sport copter. Well, it's made in Scapoose, Oregon, and uh, it's, to me, a pretty amazing machine. It's got a Lycoming 360, 230 horse. It's got a, a variable pitch propeller, um, cruises at about 80, 85 with two people. And uh, we just got done flying it from Santa Maria, California here over the course of about five days. And uh, it's a very comfortable machine. We've got dual dynons in it. And um, you know, it feels a little bit like an airplane, but it's certainly a lot slower. And uh, for me, this is just a really nice machine to fly. I, I like the way it lands compared to an airplane. And uh, it's nice to go slow and look at things. Going across the country, we saw a lot of beautiful sights uh, from the deserts to the Texas hills and uh, West Texas. It was it was a great trip. Um, we were we were challenged by some storms as uh, this this tropical storm came through New Orleans, but we managed to work our way through that, stay dry with an enclosed cockpit, which was nice. You were talking about the, the, the what kind of weather did you experience coming over? So we had uh, yeah we had some big challenges in the desert. It was over 100 degrees, and uh, so our density altitude was seven eight thousand feet. Taking off was a bit challenging at times, um, where we, we had to take off, just skim the ground, go around one more time to get, get some altitude. We, we, you know, we got got through those areas pretty well. It handled the altitude well once we got going. Our engine temperatures were good. Um, this Lycoming engine is really really nice engine, and it has a lot of power, and, and the heat was pretty stable. Now, as, as far as what kind of what kind of um, um, fuel mileage did you get? Uh, about 10 mile, 10, 10 gallons an hour. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we would usually fill to about 25 or 28, fly for about an hour and a half to two hours at the most, and land. And um, worked out pretty well. I mean, there's there's plenty of places to stop across. The probably the toughest place was a little bit across some areas of the desert. We certainly had to plan our fuel stops because airports are a little stretched out. But uh, always managed to find some. It was also interesting flying over the, the Bakken Shale in Texas and seeing all the oil drilling. Oh wow! And uh, uh, and then and then over Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, the the rice fields. I never realized about the rice fields there. And uh, and then the pine plantations as we came into Florida were were also. So the view from low and slow was was pretty neat. Um, How long did it take you to get from what California to Florida? So it was really four days of solid flying, uh, a, a day from, uh, I'll say five. So it was a, we took a, a day to get from Santa Maria to uh, Riverside, California, and then Riverside to just outside of Phoenix was another day, and then uh, Phoenix all the way to El Paso was a day, um, El Paso to Austin one day, Austin to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, and then we really would have made it from Gulfport, Mississippi at home, except for the storm. So we ended up in Panama City, half a day in, stayed overnight, and another half day to get here. So that right. really adds up to it. it was, uh, <laughs> we were both pretty happy to get out of the plane when we got here. Um, and there were some pretty long days where we started early and, and flew all day. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, you ought to be a pro with this machine now. <laughs> Certainly have a lot of time in it. But flying cross country doesn't um, is not as much training as taking off and landing. So we're still working on that a little bit.
enjoy the gyro videos, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so you can be notified when other videos are available. And thanks for watching.